This is Jeff Weiss with lecture materials from Unit 13 for um, food production. And what to say about food production? Well, it's a very vast topic and uh, covers uh, a, a, a whole lot of uh, things that take a lifetime of learning how to grow plants, uh, which, uh, which food crops to grow, how to um, uh, go through the entire process of uh, selecting a site, um, deciding on your crops, um, preparing the land, planting, uh, caring for your crops, harvesting, marketing, etc., etc. So uh, there's um, probably um, many hours worth of material um, to be covered in this topic to just scratch the surface. So in a video that I plan will take 15-20 uh, minutes, uh, we can skim the surface of the surface and uh, I've chosen a couple of topics uh, to try to um, to do so in, in focusing on our uh, industrial um, agriculture system versus uh, some of the uh, new practices uh, uh, toward sustainable horticulture, uh, local um, uh, food production, uh, just draw some of the big contrasts that will help uh, help you drill down and learn more uh, about these uh, uh, different practices and approaches and some of the uh, implications on our food supply and on our uh, environment. Uh, so this uh, material continues next week with a discussion on, on uh, sustainability and the assignment uh, for, for uh, is due next week. It covers uh, lessons 13 and 14 is due at the end of lesson 14. So uh, on with the show. Uh, apologize for the superficial uh, coverage of these topics but uh, you can dig in based on your interests and how much time you have to spend on this. So on completion of this unit you should be able to uh, discuss the pros and cons of industrial and organic food production and describe the organic certification process. There's actually a, a pretty good um, chapter on organic um, food production in the um, Aqua textbook. So I urge you to spend a little time and uh, I'll look through that material. Some of the key terms and concepts uh, uh, are listed here and we'll get into them uh, as we go through the material. So the big picture um, of food production in the United States and increasingly around the world is the contrast between uh, production of agricultural commodities uh, such as corn and beans, soybeans, uh, and some horticultural crops. Uh, I guess you might throw uh, potatoes and uh, um, perhaps other uh, vegetable crops into that uh, into that mix. Uh, and the contract contrast is with horticultural production, uh, which is a much smaller scale, um, generally high value. Um, high-value uh, 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 products and uh, uh, probably more uh, diversity of crops on a given uh, uh, area of land. Okay, so why isn't this advancing? Ah, so uh, in summary, uh, the industrial uh, agriculture um, system that uh, has developed and is being practiced across large areas of the United States, um, heavily centered in Illinois, uh, involves use of uh, considerable inputs of chemical fertilizers and chemical uh, um, uh, pesticides. Uh, these are uh, added to the soil to increase production and uh, uh, eliminate uh, weeds and other uh, harmful organisms. Uh, 
and they typically focus on large stands of a single crop in order to maximize the yield. Um, that is a significant uh, contrast with uh, organic farming uh, and organic horticulture uh, which uh, have uh, restrictive uh, practices uh, and rely on the use of compost uh, or manures to add fertility to the soil versus synthetic uh, chemical fertilizers, um, relies on prevention and other natural pest control. So you recall from our uh, unit on uh, integrated pest management that uh, uh, pesticides are the last resort and in the case of organic farming uh, chemical pesticides are not permitted at all in order to get the organic certification and um, organic uh, farming typically includes uh, diversified crops and use of practices such as uh, cover crops um, there's a an excellent a long but excellent video on the topic of cover crops in the audiovisual materials for this assignment so um, just quickly uh, some of the key elements that are uh, considered when selecting an appropriate site for uh, any farmland but in particular uh, uh, a site for uh, growing horticultural products uh, is the exposure to sunlight so uh, any uh, any of our food crops need uh, a minimum of five to six hours full sunlight in order to uh, produce uh, an adequate crop over the course of our growing season. Uh, Well-drained soils are preferred um, and soils that uh, have a good component of organic matter are even better. Uh, if the, so if the uh, uh, crop is to be irrigated, obviously a, a water source is needed and for high value crops uh, such as vegetables, uh, irrigation in, in our um, Midwestern climate of hot summers and increasing uh, uh, droughts is a really good idea. Uh, the soil, uh, uh, the, the topography should be flat or gently sloped. Um, the, ha the more the slope uh, the more uh, likely it is uh, that soil will be lost or compromised through erosion. Uh, windbreaks for protection against uh, weather that can uh, damage the foliage of crops is a good idea. And then a uh, critical uh, element of this is access to local markets or uh, somehow to transportation systems uh, uh, for industrial production. So some of the crop types, uh, I guess one of the biggest uh, things to consider in crop selection is uh, uh, the type of crop. So um, from photosynthesis uh, uh, pathways, uh, way back when, when we talked about uh, physiology, there's uh, basically two uh, types of crops. Uh, depending on their tolerance uh, to uh, cool weather and cool soils. Uh, warm season crops are frost intolerant and they include uh, uh, many of our uh, vegetable crops, peppers, tomatoes, uh, corn, beans, squash, all the cucurbits, eggplant are all warm season crops and can only be grown uh, uh, after all danger of frost is passed and until uh, fall uh, uh, begins uh, as opposed to cool season crops which are much more tolerant of cold temperatures uh, and cold soils and some of them ha even have a slight to moderate degree of tolerance to freezing temperatures and this and this group includes broccoli uh, all of the uh, uh, mustard family, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, uh, uh, cabbage, etc. And other crops such as uh, carrots, uh, lettuce, um, rutabaga, onions, and garlic, which can be grown uh, uh, much uh, earlier and later in the season, and some of them will even survive our uh, cold uh, Midwestern winters to come back the next year. Um, critical to any successful uh, farming technique, whether it's industrial or organic or anything in between, is crop rotation. 
in crop rotation um, uh, basically uh, in, involves um, alternating between crops that build soil nutrients uh, and, and these are largely uh, uh, legumes such as uh, alfalfa or soybeans uh, uh, which uh, produce and add nitrogen to the soil and crops like corn uh, or wheat which take out nutrients and uh, crop rotations add diversity to an operation and they also are the minimum uh, that uh, is required to maintain uh, soil health over time. Not sufficient, but a minimal uh, uh, soil conservation practice. So another uh, uh, method of adding or um, rebuilding uh, uh, soil nutrients and holding in soil moisture is the use of mulches. Uh, any material derived from plants uh, adds organic matter to the soil as it decomposes uh, and holds in uh, soil moisture. It's best if uh, the mulch decomposes slowly and is free of weed seed. Um, but increasingly plastic mulches are being used to modify uh, the soil conditions under plants. Uh, help to warm the soil and reduce uh, loss of soil moisture, same as organic mulches. Um, and the timing of the installation uh, is important in order to avoid uh, promoting uh, pests under the uh, under the mulch. Here's some strategies for weed management um, on, on a uh, farm basis. They're they're different, but um, still the same concepts as um, the lecture that you saw on integrated pest management. So avoiding uh, the uh, weed seeds, uh, solarization is a practice uh, similar to what we saw with the plastic mulches where the uh, 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 weed seeds are denied the sunlight that they need to germinate or grow. Uh, flaming uh, is one of the uh, practices shown in the video. Uh, tillage is, uh, is also covered in the video and um, uh, some minimal tillage in order to uh, uh, till weeds under uh, but not uh, full plowing which totally turns over the soil and disturbs uh, uh, the soil structure and uh, the microorganisms in the soil. Some some amount of uh, uh, no-till or minimal tillage is um, a, a good practice for weed management. Uh, crop rotations also in, uh, involve uh, or reduce uh, weeds uh, as does uh, planting uh, more than one crop uh, at the same time. So uh, sometimes intercropping uh, involves uh, uh, a second crop in the rows between the primary crop to produce a later second crop and that uh, reduces the amount of uh, sunlight hitting the soil that will promote uh, weed growth. Uh, mulching we covered and then finally herbicides and in particular the use of uh, Roundup Ready uh, crops uh, that allow uh, herbicides to be uh, sprayed on both the crop and the weeds are uh, uh, is a practice that's uh, extremely important for industrial farming and the use of Roundup Ready uh, crops I believe was covered in uh, prior lessons. So um, going back to our uh, discussion on use of herbicides um, kind of the there's uh, strategies for pest management based on saving the um, the pesticide use for last. So proactive management and cultural and mechanical techniques are the preferred and the less uh, uh, harmful uh, methods. And also uh, there are uh, pesticides that can be derived from uh, uh, naturally occurring uh, minerals and uh, botanical uh, substances. Uh, that are less uh, harmful and persistent than uh, 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 chemical uh, 
herbicides and, and pesticides. So this uh, kind of uh, um, pyramid or hierarchy of, uh, of strategies uh, can be used to uh, minimize or eliminate the necessity for the application of uh, a lot of herbicides that get into the air, get into the soil, and in fact get into the food supply and cause uh, um, uh, unintended consequences. So here's a quick discussion of strategies for extending the growing season in our Midwest client. Uh, starting plants or growing plants in hoop houses or um, also known as high tunnels. Um, low tunnels are, or row covers are used uh, to protect plants from uh, late frosts uh, or uh, warm the soil so that these plants can get an earlier uh, better start. Um, rotation of crops and use of hardy varieties are some of the other strategies uh, for extending the growing season. So this slide is about some of the uh, downsides to the industrial agriculture system that's developed uh, over the last 50 years in the United States. Um, there's some significant uh, um, things that are occurring, whether they're uh, well understood or not. Uh, but the loss of uh, soil resources due to uh, um, erosion, due to uh, the uh, harmful effects of using large quantities of, um, of uh, synthetic fertilizers, um, and 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 I thought this this chart was uh, was interesting. Uh, it uh, is actually produced by the uh, um, uh, Natural Resource Conservation Service, uh, part of the USDA, and it quantifies the um, uh, damage that can be um, created, both in terms of on-site and off-site, um, through um, loss of soil function or through um, uh, uh, pollution of uh, caused by soil erosion, and uh, that costs us twenty-eight dollars a ton of soil. And uh, if you just think about uh, our soils in Illinois, might be a foot or more deep. Uh, there's a lot of tons in an acre of soil, so that the uh, the actual um, loss of soil function and offsite damage can be astronomical. So um, uh, certainly um, erosion of uh, uh, and, and loss of nutrients into our water supply causes uh, significant water pollution and is in fact largely responsible for the creation of the dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico that's received a lot of publicity. Um, uh, air pollution um, through the um, uh, loss of uh, ammonium into the atmosphere from, uh, from fertilizers, um, loss of uh, the diversity in habitats uh, in agriculture land, and de deforestation are some of the other um, um, costs of um, our highly productive uh, uh, but questionable sustainability uh, approach to agriculture in this country. So um, kind of uh, in, in contrast with that, um, uh, a, a number of uh, a large number of uh, growers have gone to uh, organic um, means of production, and uh, uh, it's our organic uh, agriculture system is far from perfect, um, but it uh, does uh, address and try to resolve some of the problems that we have uh, created for ourselves in our uh, industrial agriculture system, and the acceptance of um, and the value placed on organic, uh, organically grown uh, food has increased. So for um, this is year 2008, um, but it shows the story, and this trend is continuing in terms of uh, the amount of organic food uh, being sold in this country: uh, fruits and vegetables, dairy, beverages. Uh, uh, 
grains, snack foods uh, are all, and even meat, fish, and poultry are all uh, rapidly increasing in uh, market share, and uh, it's uh, making a difference. So, how does one, how does a farmer get organic certification? Well, um, under current USDA organic rules, a third party needs to confirm that a, a farm or handling operation is in compliance with organic standards. Um, and producers can only market uh, agricultural products under an organic uh, seal, uh, which uh, certifies compliance with the standards. So the emphasis throughout organic uh, production is on plant and animal health, preventive management of pests rather than use of, uh, of, uh, uh, of synthetic um, fertilizers and uh, pesticides. And these uh, 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 products are, are tracked and protected from contamination from the, seed to uh, from the field to final sale. Uh, whether they involve a raw agricultural commodity or a multi-ingredient processed product. So this is a very complex, uh, we have a very complex uh, uh, path from uh, field to fork and uh, organic uh, practices uh, require quite a bit of uh, planning compliance and record keeping in order to assure that they that these standards are met. So the steps involved are first that a um, producer or farmer has to select their certifier, uh, submit an organic systems plan uh, that uh, uh, demonstrates that the uh, rules are understood and will be complied with. Uh, an application is filed along with the OSP and those are reviewed by the certifier. Uh, next, the certifier um, makes an actual ins uh, on-site inspection uh, to review the, uh, uh, the farm or, or uh, processing location. Uh, and then the uh, uh, report that comes out of that uh, is uh, reviewed before um, issuing the certification and then finally uh, annual inspections either scheduled or unannounced are required to maintain the certification. What are the benefits? Well, uh, the, the benefit is in uh, having uh, consumers um, have their confidence uh, to pay the extra cost when they buy organic food and uh, it assures that the requirements for um, organic certification are met and that record keeping is uh, maintained and improved over time. Uh, it, uh, it assures a better understanding of the organic standards uh, by the producer and uh, uh, facilitates uh, information exchange about allowed and prohibited materials and generally um, enhances public education and the technical assistance available to the farmer. But organic uh, food products, as we know, uh, cost more. Who pays that cost? Well, the direct cost of the certification is paid by the farmer, uh, but the cost is passed on to the consumer uh, in terms of higher uh, difference in cost for organic versus non-organic products. Um, but increasingly, as we saw in the chart, uh, consumers are willing to pay that difference. And uh, that brings up the larger questions about uh, uh, who pays the cost of the damage being caused by the more traditional or industrial agriculture uh, practices, the long-term costs. Well, right now, nobody's paying for those. It's a debt that's being built up. Uh, in terms of uh, loss of soil quality, uh, uh, environmental pollution, and uh, public health that is external and not being uh, uh, passed on to anyone uh, directly in the cost of our food. Uh, what's it worth to support organic farmers? Well, increasingly as organic uh, food products get more 
uh, acceptance, uh, that price difference is becoming smaller and smaller. So uh, over time, um, perhaps the uh, traditional or industrial uh, practices uh, will be improved and these uh, uh, long-term and hidden uh, costs will uh, become reduced. And I think a good example of that, if you follow through the whole uh, video um, posted for this unit, you can see where some of the traditional farmers are starting to get it and, and, and uh, using uh, more sustainable practices to reduce their inputs of uh, chemicals. Um, the Farm Bill, the uh, Congress has uh, uh, been stuck and the Farm Bill has not been renewed since 2008, uh, but the Farm Bill provides uh, incentives and support for organic farmers. Hopefully those get renewed when the Farm Bill is actually passed. And then uh, the USDA uh, has a number of programs to support in uh, organic uh, farm practices. And uh, one of the new programs encourages the use of native pollinators. As some of you know, uh, honeybees have been under extreme uh, stress and are suffering worldwide from a phenomenon uh, called hive collapse. And the USDA program uh, encourages use of our native uh, pollinators, which are numerous and can uh, perform uh, many of the pollination functions uh, presently performed by uh, uh, honeybees. And then, um, what can we do? Well, as consumers, we can promote organic and local food choices in our community. Um, uh, if you haven't already, visit the farm at C uh, CLC or um, learn more about the uh, CSA's Community Supported Agriculture Businesses at uh, uh, Prairie Crossing. Uh, that is in uh, one of the things you can get out of the assignment uh, 13 and 14 is to uh, look into the availability of uh, uh, organic food um, right in our neighborhood in Grays Lake or grow your own vegetables in your backyard. And uh, this final slide shows some uh, links to information, other information sources about uh, sustainable and uh, organic uh, uh, practices and information. And I'll leave it to you as to uh, what other information you want to uh, pull together uh, to improve your uh, knowledge uh, on horticulture or your sophistication as a consumer about how to get uh, uh, better food into your diet and reduce the impacts of uh, some of our um, industrial agricultural and horticultural practices. Uh, so that is it for Unit 13. Um, this will be continued in a more general way uh, in the Unit on Sustainability next week in Unit 14.